is us, our faces. We are Sure Stay Group. Um, sure Stay Group is very deliberately named, actually. We provide a certain place for somewhere to live for a long period of time, Sure Stay Group. Um, so we're a property development company who we create affordable housing for financially vulnerable families, um, which is superior to the usual shit they have to live in, basically. Um, and we create social impact investing opportunities for people who want to put their money to work in the creation of those superior homes. So I have sort of nicknamed you the connector today and me the analyst, or as I described it in the lunch, you're the accelerator and I'm the brake. Um, so <laughs> you're... <laughs> it kind of is like that though, isn't it? It just sort of came out and it felt That's about true. <laughs> yeah. So our two experiences are really nice compliments. So Mark, as you may know, rehouses homeless families anyway in a separate business. Um, and through that has got amazing relationships with councils in terms of, for want of a better word, a pipeline of needy tenants. And we are fueled by all of the prop tech that Ming um, has affiliated rates for. And then my experience, I'm a developer. I have developed HMOs and residential flips um, and I've worked with quite a lot of private funds in the creation of those so far. And I share in the ethos with Mark about creating nurturing homes where people feel like they are worthy of a decent place to live as their platform for life um, in that moment or going forwards. I um, don't know if anybody knows what this number is. I'd be astonished if you did know what this number is. But this number represents the number of families in the UK who live in temporary accommodation at the moment. I know, it's mega. Families or people? Families. So a family could be two or more, obviously. Um, so our job, our role, the, the business that we have created is to um, find families. It's not hard to find families who are living in temporary accommodation and move them into a permanent home. That's basically what we do. So we buy buildings which are blocks of flats or can become blocks of flats. We renovate them to a, a nice standard. Then we rent them out to families on affordable rent. Um, it then becomes their home and we hold the property and then we refinance it for the higher value once we've increased its rent. It's like the BRR model on block scale. Um, and yeah, that's what we do. And this number is the goal that we have for the number of families that we would like to create homes for by the end of next year. So our company was formed in January this year. We want to house 50 families by Christmas next year. Um, so yeah, by my the end of next year. My number is the accelerator is a lot higher than Jesse's. <laughs> <laughs> um, and today, the reason that we're here as a Mingers of the Month is because it is our first massive, massive milestone yes. today. So today is completion day of our first purchase under Shore Stay Group. So our purchase is um, this block of 11 flats. We have agreed with the vendor that we won't share um, a huge amount about it publicly, but we're really happy to say that it's been bought from a housing association. It's two large terraces, which inside are configured as 11 flats. Um, yeah, and we're gonna be renting it out to families who need a permanent place to live. Uh, and it did not come without its challenges, um, but we only have like a minute. So just in a very brief summary, this project grew our knowledge. Yeah, Mark's phrase to me is, we learn learning just don't worry. Um, and <laughs> every day's a school day. Every day's a school day and our risk appetite. We learned how aligned our risk appetites were, which has been amazing. So on this deal, we have overcome protracted timescales because we thought we would own this project in March. It's September. A uh, sitting tenant was one of the reasons for that. Uh, a property trade, this is a back-to-back -back purchase, so we've learned a little bit about property back-to-backing. Um, a risk of insolvency, we've bought this from a housing association as the top seller, so we've learned all about insolvency indemnity and managing that. Planning restrictions, this has a lot more than we realised when we initially did our due diligence. And one thing that I haven't put up on here is... Um, the wrong legal pack. Don't assume that information in your legal pack is to do with your property because it isn't always, and that could be really stressful, but it doesn't need to be. Um, loads of missing information, and then we switched funding strategies really close to the purchase of this because just of. To, just to touch on that as well, which we haven't put on here, we bought a building in an Article 4 area 
that requires selective licensing, an HMO 257 license, and it's got plane restrictions. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> us! <laughs> so we, we brought a lot of problems, didn't we? But. We did buy problems, but that's because we know how to solve them. Um, and then, yes, the second significant milestone as part of this deal is our first significant private loan. So we have bought this cash with somebody from this room. So we found the deal in this room. The funder is from this room. Um, and we, they have got security against the property. They've got first charge. Um, we had very challenging timescales working with them. In fact, uh, uh, three weeks from my first meeting to the loan landing. And there was a very hefty due diligence process. So now, if anybody wants to go through an investment process with us, we know how to deal with any question. Um, so, yeah, so what next for us? So we will be refurbing this property and taking it through the planning. Most of it looks like uh, not that. Two kitchens look like that, and the rest looks like sort of that. Sort of 70s kitchen, horrible bathrooms. and Lovely. Yeah, smelly. Like, I can't go in one of the flats. Um, and then, so our next steps are get this through planning to lift the restrictions and get it refurbed so we can get it rented out. We've got our tenancies lined up from as soon as we've got our certs through. So it's going to be earning money from day one. And then the next plan for the business is we go again. So we're actively buying all the time. Um, so, oh, I should say, actually, um, the funding and the property from this room, and we are wanting to do as much of the refurb from trades and skilled professionals and suppliers in this room as well. So come and speak to us about that. We haven't got the team fully lined up yet. Yeah. And then we want to go again. So if sources in the room, please take note. We, are, we buy in areas which are up to two hours, but ideally one and a half hours on a direct train from London because of a lot of our tenants come from there and have their networks there. And we don't want to rip them apart from that and send them up to, you know, Scunthorpe or whatever. Um, Nothing wrong with Scunthorpe, by the way. No, it was just a randomly selected town. <laughs> um, we buy blocks of flats or buildings that can be at least six units um, that we can convert into flats if they're not already. <laughs> and that's our criteria, a uh, pound per square foot under 200, a minimum 300 square metres, and where there is the freehold that we can own. So that's our criteria. That's what we've done. We're excited to do it again. Yay! Well done, us. <laughs> hey, yes. That's us. Thank you very much. Much.